Let us pray. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who, when you were given up to the will of your persecutors, suffered many torments when they took off the purple robe, which was stuck to your wounds, and put upon you your own clothes. Grant that after I have put off the clothing of this body, I may be clad with the robe of perfect charity, and that I may be adorned with your merit, and through your mercy be introduced as an adopted son into the heavenly inheritance. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who in the midst of reproach and injury bore your cross with excessive pain on your sacred and cut shoulders. Wearied and panting for breath, you toiled exceedingly under its heavy weight. Give me grace to take hold of the cross of self-denial with ardent devotion, and to imitate with the most fervent of charity the example of your virtues, and to follow you in humility even unto death. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who, when you were led from the city with two thieves, did not refuse to be pressed upon and thrust, hastened and to be afflicted in many ways. Draw me after you, that I may quickly follow. Grant that for your sake I may entirely deny, forsake, and go out of myself. Give me grace to think of you alone and to find no joy except in you, my Redeemer. Grant that I may love you alone and may return love for love. May I earnestly seek after you and live to you alone. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who, when bowed down by the weight of your cross, at length reached the place of punishment, where, offered e quite exhausted, they offered you wine mingled with gall. May you extinguish in me all gluttonous and carnal desire, giving me grace never to consent to any impure or unlawful pleasure. But may I take my food in moderation, to the glory of your name, and may hunger and thirst after you alone, and find no pleasure or gladness except in you. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who was stripped before the gaze of all people on Mount Calvary, and the soreness of your wounds being increased by the removal of your clothing. You did not refuse to undergo for my sake the most dreadful pain, Grant that I may love the spirit of poverty and never be disturbed by want or scarcity. Give me grace to bear patiently any difficulties or troubles in this life for the glory of your name. Strip my heart of every vain fancy and affection and grant me a holy intent with pious desires, renewing within me daily a most pure love for yourself. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who gave himself up to be extended naked upon the wood of the cross and the joints of your most holy limbs to be wrenched apart, most cruelly nailed and fastened thereto. Then for my sake you suffered your most delicate hands and feet to be most deeply wounded. Grant, O Lord, that I might remember with a faithful and grateful heart, this your unspeakable charity, when you did of your own accord stretch out your hands to be bored and your feet to be pierced through. O Lord, enlarge and extend my heart by a perfect love of you. Pierce it and fix it to yourself with the nail of your sweetest love, and shut up within yourself alone all my senses, all my thoughts and all my affections. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall sing your praise.
A reading from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 14. Now when Jesus heard this, he went away from there privately, in a boat to an isolated place. But when the crowd heard about it, they followed him on foot from the towns. And as he got out, he saw the large crowd, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. That evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is an isolated place, and the hour is already late. Send the crowds away, that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. But he replied, you don't, They don't need to go. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have here only five loaves and two fish. Bring them here to me, he replied. Then he instructed the crowds to sit down on the grass. He took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven he gave thanks and broke the loaves. He gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the broken pieces left over, twelve baskets full. Not counting women and children, there were about five thousand men who ate. Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side, while he dispersed the crowds. After he sent the crowds away, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. Meanwhile the boat, already far from land, was taking a beating from the waves because the wind was against it. And as night was ending, Jesus came to them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost! and cried out with fear. 
Immediately Jesus spoke to them, Of courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Peter said to him, Lord, if it is you, order me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. Peter got out of the boat, walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind, he became afraid and started to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they went up into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. After they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret. And when the people there recognised him, they sent word into all the surrounding area, and they brought all their sick to him. They begged him if only they could touch the edge of his cloak, and all who touched were healed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We can learn a great deal from this relatively short and apparently simple account. Jesus had just learnt of the execution of John the Baptist, and he hoped for a few days of relative peace and calm to pray and meditate on this. He knew that he had come to the attention of Herod, and that he would be next on his list to single out and deal with. So, as it was not yet time for his own death, he sought their relative safety of a region out of Herod's reach. It is important for us to understand that God does not expect us to make unnecessary sacrifices, including that of our own lives, unless he specifically calls for this. Sometimes he will open a door for us to find an alternative solution, a place of safety in this case. Just as Joseph took Mary and her baby to Egypt to escape the butchering swords of Herod's father, Herod the Great. Jesus stepped across the border out of Judea and into a remote area. This account teaches us something of the nature of the disciples. They had a concern for the crowd that had gathered. The hour was getting late, and being a remote place, they would have to travel a while before being able to find anything to eat. More than this, though, we learn of the selfless compassion of Jesus for strangers, for those who are hungry and thirsty for his teaching. Although he wanted to be on his own just with a few friends, he felt for the crowd that was waiting for him, and we read that he healed the sick that had been brought to him. Furthermore, although the sensible thing to have done would have been for to do as the disciples suggested, sending the crowd home. Jesus would have none of it. He sensed their need and went on to perform one of the few miracles that are recorded in all the Gospels, feeding at the crowd of 5,000 plus however women, many women and children there might have been. Although we do not read of any being converted, there must at least have been some enthusiasm and interest in what Jesus was saying and doing. They must have been standing both out of respect and interest, for Jesus told them all to be seated on the grass. All the time of this gathering so far, they had been standing in the heat of the day. However, the miracle was performed and we are given no insight into this, so it is not for us to wonder at it is abundantly clear to us that Jesus is the one who deeply cares for all of us. How he loves us, even if we eventually decide to ignore him. How many of those on the hillside that evening would be with him in the weeks and months ahead? If there were 10,000 there, which is, after all, perfectly possible. It is telling that we read of no conversions. But we can see that there was an interest in his teaching even if the final decision was to reject the message. I've always had an empathy for Peter, the impulsive one, quick to act without thinking and then facing a crisis. 
Here he saw Jesus and wanted to join him, walking on the water. So Jesus called him over. Out of the boat and at the critical point, Peter's faith wavered and he could have been lost. Jesus rebuked him and asked him where his faith was. Do we have the faith to step out onto the deep in the name of the Lord? Or do we think we will do and then wilt at the thought of it? Do not be disheartened because God will always give you faith enough. All you have to do is ask. Do not be downhearted if your faith wavers. It has happened to others before. Just pray for the strength of faith that you need. God will never call upon you to do something that is impossible for you. He will always give you the tools you need for the job. But you may well have to ask for them first. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, mercifully look upon our infirmities and in all our dangers and necessities stretch forth your right hand to help and defend us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.